Today I'm back with Barn Sprite number three. This car has always been hard to start and the starter went bad during the last video. So today I think it's a good time to take care of the electrical system on the car. I've ordered a new starter, so let's dive in. I'm going to start with a new reproduction starter motor that I got from Moss Motors. It looks very similar to the original starter. Here's an original starter for comparison. But this car is not going to be any concourse restoration and this starter should work just fine. The old starter is still in the car, so I need to start by removing that. There's one wire that needs disconnected on the rear of the starter. And then on the top of the starter, there is one bolt and nut that holds it on, and the second one underneath the starter. I'm going to disconnect the wire going to the starter and the upper bolt, and then I can raise the car up, undo the lower bolt, and see if I can get it out of there, but I may need to take the oil filter off in order to get it out. Now that I have the starter loose, you can see the problem. There's not enough of a hole here for the starter to come straight down. And the oil filter is in the way from the starter from coming back much. So I will have to remove the oil filter in order to get the starter out. Luckily, it's just one bolt to remove the oil filter canister. Now with the canister removed, there's still not a lot of room in there, but it's just enough to get the starter out. So to remove the starter, I leave the Bendix in the hole where it engages the ring gear, and then I slide the starter out this way. On this side of the oil filter, there's just enough clearance to do that, and then you can lift the front of it out. And then from there, if you get the ears lined up, you should be able to get it out of there without removing anything else. Putting in the new starter is just the reverse of that operation. Just like that. Now we'll get the starter bolted in and the starter wire back on. The new starter is installed and you've probably noticed that there's no generator here in the way. That's because I have removed it to have it rebuilt. So I'll get this back installed and then we can try to start the car. Generator is back in on the rear of it. There is two wires that connect back here as well as the drive for the tack drive. The tack drive has this gearbox on it. That is what adapts the RPMs that the generator is seeing to the actual RPM of the engine. And that is keyed, so it is only going to go in one way. And then you tighten the nut down to secure it. I think everything's ready. We can reconnect the battery and then start it up and test out those carbs that we rebuilt last time. That's pretty nice. Now that the starter is working again and the generator is rebuilt, let's grab a voltmeter and see if that generator is working. And if not, let's see if we can get it to work. I have my voltmeter hooked up with the engine not running. We are showing 12 and a half volts on the battery right now. So we need to run it and rev it up and see if this number increases, hopefully somewhere close to 14. I was going to polarize the generator, but then I realized that the little wire on the field wire has come loose. But since it's loose, let's polarize it anyway. So I just want to take this lead. The other end is connected to battery. The hot will touch it. We get a little spark. That's all it needs. And the generator should be polarized. Let's connect up the missing wire and try this all again. The 
The generator is still not charging, so let's move on to the regulator, or as some countries call it, the control box. Right now I don't know if my problem is the regulator or the wiring, so I'm going to replace the regulator with a good one. This one I bought from Moss Motors. You can see all the different cars that it does fit, so I've had this sitting around. Let's just throw this in and then see if the generator works. If not, we'll take a look at the wiring. So I have the old regulator loose. It was held on right here on the fender. I'm going to move the wires from the old one to the new one and check the wires while I'm moving them, make sure that they're clean, make sure that they're not broken. And then once this one is hooked up, we'll fire it up and test it again. Before I bolt the regulator back up, let's test it and see if it works. Right now we're showing 12.627 volts. If it goes up from here, the generator is working. Starting to go up. We get up to 13, it's definitely working. Let's rev it up a little. Generator's working now, I can bolt the regulator back in. I think I'm really close to wrapping up this project. Let's get it cleaned up. Wow, look at the difference. I am really happy with the way these cars have been cleaning up. Even the interior in this car looks fantastic. The seats look like they are brand new. Can you believe that this car just came out of a barn? I did replace the choke cable, so there's a new one on the dash. I think these cars look great with the hard top on. Well, I think this is about the end of my time with barn sprite number three. I have been working my way through these sprites for the last four years. So I have been working on this one for a few years now, and I think it's time that it moves on to a new owner. This car is still very much a project, but hopefully through my videos, I have shown that these cars are very simple to work on. And if you were to buy this car, you could of course watch my videos to find out how to fix it. I think this car is pretty representative of a time capsule of a car that was put away a long time ago and hasn't been touched since. This car does have the factory hardtop as well as the side curtains. Someone must have put new seats and carpet in it shortly before it was tucked away for many years. The soft top as well as the convertible frame are also in the car. At some point someone did put a stereo in the car, that is something that a dealer would have installed when the car was new if the owner wanted a radio. The shift knob is not original but it is period. And the speedometer is from a later version of a Sprite. That is not the original, it should match with that gray ring in the middle like the tachometer does. I did replace the choke cable with a good reproduction, it looks very much like the original. I am purposely selling this car as a project. I would like this car to go to someone who likes to watch my videos and likes to work on the cars. All the lights are in place, but not all of them are working at the moment. In my opinion, this is the way that you would want to buy a car. This car runs and drives. You know that everything is here. This would make an easy restoration or a great project just for keeping it running and keeping it on the road. If I kept this car, I would replace the wire harness with a new one. That way the old ratty one is not there and you can know that you will have a somewhat reliable electrical system. And I would also replace the exhaust. A part of it has been patched with an expandable pipe and it is very loud at the moment. So I would put a new exhaust system on it. I think that's going to be it for today. If you are interested in Barn Sprite number three, send me an email thiswickwithcars at gmail.com.